no, no, look his face. He, yeah. he, he's, he's dangerous. Mm -hmm. he's you can like. The guy is special. Yeah. Everything that could yeah. possibly be special yeah. about this guy is special. A guy like this is the type of guy that you love yeah. to watch and follow the yeah. most special guy that I've ever come across. Hello everyone, just before this interview starts, I want to make it clear that this interview was filmed before Damon Jackson's fight with Derek Minner was pulled from the June 4th card due to undisclosed reasons on Minner's end for pulling out. But I still think it was a very good interview, got some really good insight from Damon Jackson on the fight, on his career, on the future. It's a really good new interview. I hope you enjoy. Hello and welcome back to the Pedant McCoy Sports Show presented by Headrush. Today we have UFC featherweight Damon Jackson. How are you? Good, man. How are you doing? I'm good. So let's go to the beginning of your career before the UFC, before everything. What made you get into MMA? Was it a specific fight you saw or were you always training and doing athletics? Um, it was uh, it was kind of a, my uncle, he watched a lot of UFC stuff. And then I, I kind of got into it then, but not really. And then uh, the Ultimate Fighter came out and, um, you know, the original season. And, um, you know, I just like fell in love with it then. And I knew I wanted to start wrestling just because I saw – a lot of the guys on there that were winning were wrestlers, so I wanted to start wrestling. So that, that's when I started wrestling, was like in seventh grade. And so now you work out of Fortis MMA. So who's your favorite person at that gym to work with? Um, I have a I have quite a bit of training partners, but like a lot of the guys around my weight class are like Miles Johns, Stephen Peterson, and um, you know Abdul. And like uh, we, I've got a, I've got a lot of handful of guys that I work with. Um, but really, those those like three are the ones that do most of my camps, um, you know, a lot of the time. So depending on what the style of the fighter is, but those those three are there quite a bit. Do you think your early run in the UFC, you know, you fought in 2015, it didn't necessarily go your way since then? Not, after that, you went eight and two and booked your ticket back to the UFC. Do you think having that experience has helped you take your career to the next level? Yeah, for sure. Sure. Like whenever I made it to the UFC the first time, I'd only been fight. I I started fighting. Um, I'd only been fighting for a year and a half. So when I made it in, I was just really fresh into my career. I had a lot of fights, like back to back. You know, I had nine fights in a year and a half, and um, it, I got in the UFC really quickly. Um, but it definitely, you know, it, it's helped me out a lot. You know, having the experience originally and then working my way back up. You know, back to this level is um, definitely taught me a lot. And now, looking back, your last two fights, you fought Charles Rosa, and you dealt with a nasty cut in, the, in that fight. So what was it like dealing with the blood coming down your face and still ba battling out and still winning the fight? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely, it's crazy when you're in there. You don't really, like, you don't really get to think a whole lot about, uh, you know, getting cut or getting punched or anything like that. Um, but it was... Uh, it was kind of obvious it was just like right there in my face because I had his back so I had a lot of controls so I had a lot of time to just sit there and think and um, while I had his back and I had my arm across his neck he was holding my other hand he was holding my other glove he was cheating like really bad but he was holding my other glove and I felt the blood just I felt how warm it was when my head was touching the mat and I could feel the, the all the blood on my cheek and I was like man this is crazy because normally when you bleed you don't really feel the blood the warmth but I could feel the the blood and I, I knew the referee was looking in my eye and I couldn't tell how bad it was it didn't hurt so much it was more just like surprising how bad I was bleeding and was it stinging or did the adrenaline just make you feel the warmth of the blood yeah that's all I felt was the warmth I didn't feel any like like any pain they stitched it up like as soon as my fight was over and they didn't use anything they just like went right to it and I didn't feel any pain it was just more like um yeah just as surprising how warm like the the warmth and then the smell of it you can smell you know normally I can't smell very good but I could smell that pretty bad it was, it was pretty crazy and afterwards like in the morning you know the morning after did you feel like a lot of head pain from the cut um, it wasn't head pain. It was more just like the superficial, like my face hurt. Cause that was, that was literally the only punch he landed the whole fight. He didn't land anything else. Like the whole time he didn't land anything else. So like I had no, nothing else besides that cut. And, but it, it, it had a lot of pressure on my face. It felt like uh, the, 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 it felt like the stitches were going to pop at some points. So like, you know, after a few days, it was definitely, it was, my face was tight for sure.
And now going and looking at your recent performance, it was a very impressive performance. Did that go exactly the way you wanted? Was that, if you had to draw it up on paper, yeah. was that perfect? Pretty much. That's kind of like, pretty much like exactly what me and my coach did, uh, game plan. That's exactly how it played out. And, um, you know, it was just perfect. It worked out so good. That doesn't always happen, but when it does, it's, it's nice because you don't like take all the damage. Your body feels good. You can, you can go back into training quicker and, you just feel better all around when, when things work out your way. But that was exact game plan, yeah. And in that fight, before the finishing choke, you had the choke locked in, You were, but you were still inside his guard. Did you think you were, he was going to tap out there? Or do you think um, you were just holding Yeah, I finish, a, I finish a lot of people in that. Um, it's kind of like a, a white belt level move kind of thing. But, like, when I go for that, um, it's really not for the finish. I do that to put pressure on people. And then they open their guard, and then I pass, and then I get yeah. my real finish. So he was smart, but holding on to guard, he didn't he didn't open his guard up, and you know which is smart from him. But um, normally I go for that just so people will open their guard up, and then I pass and get the finish. Well, later on, then in the fight, I think it was like a minute later, you still passed the guard, and you still got the finish, and you let out like a almost like a war cry. So how much did getting that finish mean to you? Sure, man. Every fight means every every fight uh, getting finishes is what I love. You know, I just love that um, putting someone in that position where they have to tap to survive. You know, going out there and you know getting a choke locked up is better for me than hitting someone and making them fall down. Like I would rather I would rather choke someone like that than um, than knock someone out. Now, before we talk about your fight with Derek Minner, I want to talk about uh, recently you put your name in the hat for a fight with Joe Lozon after Cowboy Sunday yeah. pulled out. Yeah. Uh, was that a fight you really wanted? And do you think you want, will take more short notice 155 fights if they come up? Oh, yeah, I would take a big like, – that's, a, that's a, such a high-profile fight. Um, it was really just like I was trying to do a favor to them, but I wanted to – I was dead serious. I really wanted, to, wanted that fight, wanted to be a part of that card. It was just a – it was a good time. Like um, the the timing was good. I could have um, easily been ready for a three rounder. Um, and at fifty five would have been perfect. So um, I was definitely prepared to step up if they if they needed me to. And I wanted to just kind of make sure they understood that I was there. Um, that way they didn't have to like bring someone else in or you know I wasn't sure how much I was actually going to get the fight or not. But when I when I texted Dana and he responded back, it was. They, already, they had already moved the card to a different day because they want that fight to happen. So um, I'm glad to see that fight still going on, but I definitely would have loved to fight either one of them. Now, obviously, I, you know, we've seen on Instagram and on Twitter, and you just mentioned it there, you messaged Dana about the fight. So do you think showing him that, you know, you'll be on his list of short notice guys he can call up and say, hey, do you want this fight? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I like basically, you know, like, I, you know, like I want, wanted that fight to say how high profile it was. I don't want to fight a short notice fight unless it's a profile fight. But if they need me to do something, I'm gonna fight anybody, whatever. Like I don't I I don't care. Um and especially at 55, I'll go up and fight someone there for sure. But um, you know, I'm I'm zoned in right now on Derek and, and um after this fight, I would like to get back in as soon as possible and um you know, mix it up with, you know, like work my way up the rankings and see where I'm at and uh, really test myself. And, um, you know, right now I'm just, I'm focused on Derek and that's, that's the one fight that I'm looking forward to. It's a, it's a good fan favorite matchup. It's a good style matchup for both of us. Um, it should be an exciting fight. So now let's talk about the Derek fight. You're now, he's a tough opponent. He just fought Ryan Hall. What do you what did you make of that last performance? Or are you not focused on that at all? No, um, Ryan Hall's got such a goofy style that you can't really judge someone's uh, skill from going against him. He's got like a really unorthodox style of grappling that um, you know is just kind of goofy looking. If you don't really understand jujitsu, you won't really want to watch him fight at all. I think he's very boring fighter as far as like fan fans go, but. He's a very dangerous opponent, and he has a lot of threats on the leg lock stuff, and then just his jujitsu in general. So he's he's a pretty good opponent, and to watch um, Derek survive, you know, his leg locks and his uh, positioning and stuff like that, 
Um, but, you know, it's impressive. You know, I respect Derek a lot. I think he's got a lot of uh, great talent uh, on the ground, like submission wise. And I think that maybe his defensive submissions, he kind of gives things up on, but he's, he's tough enough on the feet to slug it out. And then he goes to his offensive, you know, guillotine or offensive uh, front head lock and he gets people down, you know, pretty gracefully. He doesn't take a lot of damage. So, um, but you know, his gas tank is questionable and mine's definitely, you know, I'm ready to roll. Now. So you mentioned his fights. Have you been watching a lot of his fights or have you just been focusing solely on your game? No, I always watch people's fights. I watch them. Um, I kind of get, I, I do my cardio, watch people's fights. I do my cardio and I watch their interviews. Um, I kind of, I like to study people and I see their demeanor, see their, their thought process um, from when like a month ago when he was doing interviews to where they, where he is now. So um, I know he's going to be ready to go. I know he's been training with a great camp and um, I know he's going to be ready to roll and, and I'm definitely always ready. Now, what do you make of Derek as an opponent, like where you are in the rankings? You know, you're close to the top 15. Do you think a fight with him and winning that fight could push you towards that and get you a bigger name in the top 15? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I think Derek's, uh, he's been tested. He's, he's had some big fights and um, he's survived, you know, um, he's, he's done some good stuff. I think that um, really what it was, was I was trying to get on the Dallas card and they were scheduled for June 18th. And um, when that card, when it, whenever they said that they were going to Austin, I told my manager, I was like, hey, uh, just give me a fight whenever you can. I want to fight as soon as possible. So you got me the card on the June 4th. And, um, you know, like I was looking for a, you know, a good ranked fight for that June 18th card. And then they said Derek was ready to go. So I was like, all right, let's go. Let's, you know, let's take, let's do this, you know. And um, it wasn't really me picking my matchup at all. It was just me accepting the fight when they offered it to me. And I think it's a good matchup uh, for fans and for, you know, for both of us to kind of get in there and scrap it up a little bit. I think it's going to be an exciting fight. Now, do you think if this fight goes your perfect way and you don't take a lot of damage, you you want to try and get on that uh, Austin card if possible? You know, maybe there's a short notice or no, not the Austin assist. card. I don't want the Austin card. I want the Dallas card because I grew up about an hour and a half from Dallas, so okay. it would yeah. be cool. To, it'd be like a hometown fight for me. It would be really cool. And um, I you know I grew up uh, in in Oklahoma in Durant and um all like for all of my LFA fights were in Dallas. And so like, I, I have a really big fan base here and um, you know, it would just be really cool to fight, uh, you know, at the American Airlines Center with all my fans there that, you know, have been with me from the beginning, so. You have a name in mind you want to call out for chance in that? Um, in that yeah, line? but I, I don't want to skip past Derek. You know, I want to yeah. I want to say zone in on him. And then um, after this fight, I will 100% have a name ready um, you know, if I'm talking to whoever's in the middle uh, coming in after the fight's over, um, I have a, I definitely have a name I'm gonna call out, and um, you know, it makes a lot of sense. The matchup makes a lot of sense, and so does this Derek fight. So I've got to go in there and take care of business with Derek, and then um, go from there. And so, how many more times do you want to fight this year? Obviously, you fight in April. You're fighting in June. How quickly do you want to fight again? And how many more fights after that do you want to fight? Um, I don't know. I can't really put a gauge on it because like, uh, as far as like, uh, how long I want to fight, I, I might fight till I'm 40. I might, you know, go all in these next eight, like four to eight fights and, you know, and then wrap it up. Like, I, I really don't know. I just kind of like, I kind of test myself in the room whenever people have fights, I go against them and, I, and then I get to go watch them fight. And then whenever I see them doing good or I see them doing bad or whatever, I kind of gauge myself off of that. And so, as long as I'm doing good in the room, I think that I should continue to fight just because of how much I love it. And, um, and I'm not taking, you know, crazy amount of damage. It's really just like superficial, like cuts. So, um, you know, the day that that comes, I have a pretty good family, a pretty good uh, group of friends. And I think that they would be honest enough to tell me when it's time to stop. But um, as far as this year goes, I want to have this fight and then I want to go into um you know another you know quick turnaround maybe like the Dallas card would be amazing that would just be so cool to fight in Dallas like that seven weeks later uh I got a trip planned with my my wife and my kids and so we're gonna go down to Mexico as soon as my fight's over 
and then um, I'll be ready to go. I'll be training when I'm there. So I'll be ready to go for that Dallas card if I can get on that. But, uh, you know, like I said, I've got to focus on Derek and make sure that, um, you know, it's a safe fight for me. I want to make sure I get in there and don't take damage, make sure that I'm being smart on my, you know, as far as like uh, positions and stuff like that. I don't want to get in trouble with the sub or anything like that. So um, focus is on Derek and then we'll go from there. But I definitely want to stay busy. Now I've seen you been doing some interviews, you know, you've done, I've seen you did one with John Morgan very recently. Mm -hmm. So is who would be, if any journalist would contact you, who's your favorite one show to go on? Do you have a favorite journalist? Uh, I, I would say probably John Morgan, man. I mean, we've been, um, we've kind of been friends like, you know, over the years, it's like, uh, he took me serious whenever I was like real early into my career with UFC and I wasn't doing good. And we, you know, he's from Dallas area. So it's cool to like, um, you know, talk to him so much and I always see him, you know, interviewing people and, um, you know, he gets, he gets a lot of attention as far as like the way he asks questions and stuff. And, um, you know, like with me, like I, I'll, I'll do an interview with anyone and I'll, you know, I can talk to a lot of the guys that, you know, are, you know, trying to start their channels or they're, they've already got a big following or whatever. I don't really care. I just want to make sure that, um, you know, whenever people are asking these questions, they actually, um, they actually like mean what they're, you know, they, they get the answer they're, they're wanting or like, you know, they, like, it's like they, people ask me the same questions over and over and over. And uh, I try not to like get into the same answers every time and it's really hard to do that and it's kind of there's very few journalists and very few people that can kind of come into these interviews and, and bring something new so whenever you got john like you know we can we can kind of shoot the shit and like kind of talk about something that's not mma related um you know real quickly and that that helps a lot you know just kind of skipping around the mma scene because it's kind of like it's very cliche everybody's like oh where are you where are you doing your camp who are you training with who are you doing this like what are your favorite things about MMA or like we know like what's your favorite style like they ask the same questions over and over so it's good to mix it up and then you know talking about your opponent is just kind of part of it and then talking about your camp it's part of it but it's nice to mix it up that's what I wanted to do to close out uh this episode I wanted to talk to you about more personal side of things outside of fighting so outside of camp do you have a favorite food or snack that you like to have you know when you can just be you and not have to watch your diet or anything yeah like so as soon as my fight's over the very first thing i have is a cheeseburger or like a bacon cheeseburger that's the first thing i have every time and then the next day i have donuts i eat, I eat like 20 20 or more donuts like I, I eat so much donuts that it makes me like sick to my stomach like i eat so much and then um i always like to have like a slushy or like a frozen like frozen margarita like something like it's definitely different, but I have, I have a couple of days where I just kind of like, you know, eat a, a handful of things that I, that I love. And I just kind of, I kind of eat so much of it that I make myself sick. So I don't really like want to do it anymore. And so, but every time that I have a fight, I know that after I weigh in, I like the next, I, or I know that after I fight the next day, that I'm going to, I'm going to get all those things. So it's, it's kind of fun, but, um, yeah, I would say donuts are the the number one thing that I like think about like often. Like right now, I'm I'm in a calorie deficit and I really have super low carbs, so I'm starting to think about carbs. So I think about donuts all the time, and then the cheeseburger thing. That's like that's like a high school wrestling thing that I used to do. But uh, yeah, I would say donuts and then cheeseburgers. Do you have a favorite place to get your cheeseburgers or donuts from? No, because it's different wherever you fight like city wise like if i'm fighting in vegas there's a there's a couple of really good hotels that they have badass room service that bring it up to you and that's cool and like just to be in your room and like eat because i don't really like to go out in public a lot but it, it's nice to just kind of like order like a you know really nice uh, burger as soon as your fight's over and uh but honestly in and out probably is the best burger that uh, you can get like honestly it's like you can get that you know in vegas or big you can get it in like texas or california or whatever and um i like in and out burger but uh the donuts crispy cream just like plain glaze is money and then you know there's a, always donuts everywhere you go so you can find something good and um when you're at home you know maybe with your kids or on your own is there a favorite movie that you can watch many times 
rather than uh, the Sandlot movie. is something that the my girls love that movie. The Little Rascals they love that one mm-hmm. too. So like I make them watch like all the '90s movies and the you know early 2000s movies and like it's funny because they they act like it's a a brand new movie and they could just because they've never seen it. So it's cool to see them like getting to watch the same shows that I watch. But uh, those are definitely two that we watch like very often. And and now there's like all this new Disney stuff that, you know, but I, I, I still make them watch like the Lion King, the rescuers, like all the stuff that I used to watch as a kid. I make them watch that. And uh, you know, you know, it's nice to just chill at the house and I'm building a house right now. So I have a big media room. That'll be cool to have, uh, you know, just have the movies on that and just chill in there. It'd be nice, but uh, definitely I try to make them watch all the 90s stuff. So are you not very into the newer Disney things that they want? to? Yeah, just, yeah, there's there's a handful that are okay, but honestly, it's just too much. Like it's like it's just like it gets a little little uh, little pushy, like almost political, or like you know, just like there's too many different movements to keep up with, and it's just like kids should be kids. They should just be worried about like basic things. Like it's just like it's uh, it sucks to see that uh, stuff gets pulled into those kids' movies like that, and then the kids' TV shows it kind of gets pulled in there, and you know. Um, it, I don't think it's right so I, I like to stick with the old ones and and every once in a while there's like you know there's a handful that come out like once a year there'll, there'll be like a really good movie that I like to watch with them but um you know we we watch it all but I just kind of monitor as much as I can do you have a favorite tv show that maybe isn't with your kids like on your own do you have a favorite tv show that you uh well the office the office is definitely one of my favorites and but they took it off netflix so yeah it's hard to watch and then uh, kind of gotten back on um, watching the Seinfeld. It's pretty funny. Like it's like a lot of the humor on there wouldn't pass nowadays, but it's a uh, it's pretty funny, honestly. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Um, do you have a favorite ice cream flavor? I don't know if you eat much ice cream. I know you just talked about. Yeah, I mean, I I honestly don't really love ice cream, but I like me and Derek are both gonna be ready to go. Um, but all my social media is the same. It's Damon B Jackson. And, um, yeah, I'm, I'm always answering questions or doing whatever I can to, you know, stay, uh, stay active on there. So if anyone hits me up, man, like, um, you know, I don't mind the interviews and all this stuff. It just, uh, it's part of it, but, uh, I appreciate the support for sure. Well, good luck. And I want to give a big thank you to my sponsor, Head Rush. They make awesome clothes. They're super comfortable, affordable, and they've sponsored some of your favorite UFC fighters like Chuck Liddell. Carlos Condit, Dustin Poirier, Showtime Pettis, and many more. 